Another episode of Trash Talk, my partner as always, TJ O'Connor, brought to you again by Cram Chronicles Entertainment, Ink Shrinks Tattoo, Valhalla Combat Sports, and The One Union. Uh, how you doing today, TJ? Doing pretty good. How about yourself, buddy? I'm doing great. Ready to give this breakdown of LFA 68 that's going down at Mystic Lake Casino uh, Friday, May 31st. I, yeah. Sorry, I stuttered right there for a second. No, it's all good. This is a fun card. We've been talking about this one for feels like the last month interviewing almost everybody on the card. It feels like, I mean, we've been going through and now it's finally here. Uh, the weigh-ins are today. The fights will be tomorrow night, Mystic Lake. Um, be sure to go out and buy your tickets if you haven't done yet, because I know it's going to sell out. Um, quick rundown of the card here. I think it's 17 total fights, including the professionals and amateurs. Uh, we got Penji Mboma versus Joshua Stevenson. Uh, number four, Josh Clark versus number five, Ricky Field. Number eight, Davey Young versus Steven Rodriguez. Grant Boldan versus Brian Baumgart. Nick Crone versus Swingin' Dick Legas. Uh, Shannon Clark versus Annabelle Kelly. CJ Hayes versus Mike Waltz. Joey Hart versus Tim Garrett. And then the final amateur fight is uh, Tommy Peterson versus Kiefer Bender. Going into the pro card, we got Craig Eckelberg versus Nellie Thompson. Derek Varon versus JP St. Louis. Uh, Joel Bauman versus Bobby Downs. Lavelle Simpson versus Lucas Clay. Mike Rhodes versus Christian Torres. Bobby Lee versus Macon Mendonca. Rafion Stotts versus Ralph Acosta. And the main event, Nasty Nate Jennerman versus Rafael Barbosa. Um, great card from start to finish. Yeah. Um, I, I, not all of those fights are going to be televised, but uh, there's still a ton of uh, amateur fights that most people aren't going to see unless they actually buy a ticket. So I suggest you guys get your tickets because there's some really great amateur fights. Uh, one of the first ones that I want to uh, talk about is uh, Josh Clark versus Ricky Fields. Ooh. Yeah, dude. Uh, that's sorry. A, no, I was going to say that's a barn burner. Um, you got Joshua Clark, who um, is taking it slow. He's had two fights so far, um, just finished up his freshman year of college. I know he competed in wrestling this year, and he's looking to get right back in the swing of it. And he's fighting a guy in Ricky Field who has been around the block. I mean, he started competing a couple years back, took a long hiatus, and he came back with a vengeance. His last two fights – both first round knockouts, big power in both hands. I'm excited to see what Ricky can do as far as pressuring Josh and how Josh reacts to that pressure. Um, I think this has all the makings as far as the amateur portion to be the fight of the night, um, including the pro fights too. These are two guys that go, go, go. I don't think either guy's going to take a step backwards. Yeah, I I think it's your, uh, your typical matchup of uh, like, especially back in the day, like, uh, a wrestler versus a striker, mm -hmm. except Josh has amateur boxing experience. He's yeah. trained and he's been getting ready for his, uh, to display his hands, but he's been also competing in wrestling and jujitsu. So that's been more dominant in his last few fights yeah. or his first two fights. Uh, Ricky Fields is a guy that has a lot of fucking power. And when you uh, display any type of power, you need to be ready for any type of wrestler that's going to go at you because you know that they're going to try to avoid that power and be and take you down puts you on your back you don't your power decreases a whole lot more while you're on your back trying to punch you know so it, of course the wrestler is going to try to get there this is one of those things like both of them are going to be tested to see how they react to the other one and ultimately We've seen Gustafson take down John Jones when John Jones had the wrestling background and Gustafson didn't, you know, like we've seen it turn into a, a turn into other things. And Gustafson also uh, took down DC and DC never took down Gustafson. So yeah. it, it, it could play out kind of the same way, you know, but ultimately we won't know until it happens. Oh yeah. I mean, we can talk about Josh's wrestling and we can talk about Ricky's power but Josh can strike and Ricky can wrestle. So it's going to come down to, you know, who performs more on the night. And that, like I said, that, that is a fun fight to get the night started. Um, another big fight is uh, Nick Crone versus swinging Dick Legas. Uh, we had, a, we were able to interview Dick leading up to this fight. 
Um, I'm excited to see him perform. It's a guy who has a huge background as far as striking goes, and he's really submerged himself as far as grappling as well. So I'm excited to see how he can perform in his second MMA fight. Yeah, I, and I know he's trying to go out there and uh, make a statement for uh, their new gym that uh, just opened up and Mitch White out there coaching. You know, uh, I mean, I, I know that those two are going to be there in the locker room feeding off each other and hopefully go out there and get a big win, make a huge statement. Yeah, and uh, a quick shout out to number eight, Davey Young from Spartan. Uh, this is a guy I've been keeping my eye on for a little bit. Uh, he has a couple big wins versus ranked guys um, already. Uh, former Apple Valley wrestler um, who's really working hard at Spartan. Um, I, I talk to a lot of guys that train there, and they tell me that he's one of the guys in the gym in the room who, who's making a statement. So I'm excited to see him perform as well versus uh, Steven Rodriguez. Yeah, no, that that should be an interesting fight. I, 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 I love when the amateurs have an opportunity to, to prove themselves, you know, against another skilled opponent and against another guy that's going to bring the fight to them, you know. So, yeah, yeah I'm excited and for that one. Another fun fight that um, we got as in detail as we can is Shannon Clark versus Annabelle Kelly. You were able to sit down with Shannon and have an interview and I had an interview with Annabelle leading up to this fight. And both of these girls seem like they just want to bite down on their mouth guard and see what happens. And so I, I mean, I couldn't be more excited for this fight personally. Yeah, same. Like I, I watched the interview that you did. Uh, I, both girls have the same mindset, I believe. Like they, they both want to come out there and see what they're both made of and also see what the other is made of. And let the cards uh, fall how they may, you know, they're, they're, they're ready to go out there and earn a victory or walk in the ter uh, enemy territory and some, some tough heat, you know, and I think they're both going to be ready and composed because it's not their first times in the, in, in the ring, you know, so they are in the cage. i mind you. Yeah. I'm sorry. And, and <laughs> leading up to it. It's not the first time as far as with each other as well. They've trained together in the past they both know what they're getting into, and those, those tend to turn into fun fights when, when you, you meet two gals who, like I said, are willing just to bite down on that mouth guard and see what happens. I'm looking forward to that fight a lot. Um, the next amateur fight up is going to be uh, another guy we had the chance to interview just recently, uh, C.J. Hayes from The Cellar. Um, good guy. Uh, fun talking to him as far as his background in wrestling, um, being undefeated in Muay, Muay Thai fights explaining his first fight with us. I feel like he was a guy that really uh, gave a depth as far as his character and who he is. And I'm looking, I'm excited to see his return. I mean, like I told him when we were talking, it sounds like they had him on the chain for a little bit and he, he's ready to get running. So um, I, I, his opponent, Mike Waltz, is a game opponent from Wisconsin. Um, he's, um, you know, fought a lot of tough guys himself. So this isn't going to be an easy fight at all, as you never expect on an LFA card. Um, but I'm excited to see what uh, Cooper can do in this fight. Yeah, like you said, there there's no easy fights, but but I, I I really do feel like he's one of those guys that's that like the way you put it is perfect. Been held back on the chain and finally is able to be let loose, and uh, the dog that escaped from the yard, you're not gonna catch that motherfucker. You know, he's 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 ready to go, and it and the the. The personality and the uh, the interview that we did with him, uh, the side that we were able to see, and even the conversation that we had off camera, you know, uh, I, I I really believe in this dude. And to find out like how he lost the the first time, uh, and he he didn't make any excuses, but that's reality. Like that was an injury that led to a loss, and it happened in the middle of the fight. Granted, it was building up, and then it finally just hit that boiling point, boiled over, and it snapped, and he, he pulled his hamstring. But now he's 100%, and he's ready to go. This is this is, this is going to be a really good fight, I believe. And uh, if, if not a good fight, just a <coughs> most likely a dominant performance. Uh, no, no disrespect to his opponent, but after talking with him and seeing his, uh, his, his background and his old uh, highlights and some of his uh, kickboxing matches – it, I, I think we're dealing with a with an animal that no one's seen before yet. So it's gonna be it's gonna be really nice to see what happens in this fight. I agree. His confidence talking to him um, is something that was you know his aura was speaking for itself. And I guess yeah, he he wasn't great. arrogant at all. He didn't come across as arrogant at all. But you can tell that he he believes, and I I believe too. <laughs> and speaking and believing. 
Um, a guy that I think is, I mean, if not the current, I think he's the future of Minnesota MMA. Um, I couldn't be more high on this kid. Joey Hart, number one ranked fighter at 170 pounds, is fighting versus Tim Garrett. Uh, I've had a chance to look up Tim uh, leading up to the fight, leading up to the interview with Joey. He's a game guy. He's been in there with a lot of tough guys, and uh, he, he's had nights where he really shows up. And if he can show up, I think he can give Joey a tough fight. Um, I, I do think Joey's the favorite in this fight, and I think it's for good reason. Um, I think, like I said, I, I couldn't be more high on his talent. I'm excited to see him perform in this fight. I know he's had a strong camp up at start BJJ, and uh, I'm excited to see him perform this Friday night. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the the quote-unquote main event of the amateur card, right? Co-main event. We got another Co-main big- event of the... Okay, yeah. So the you you don't get there. I mean, b- both sides have to earn that position, you know. So this is definitely going to be a tough fight and a tough test for both of them. Neither guy is going to walk out of this fight without earning the victory that they're handed at the end of the night, or that not handed, but that they're awarded at the end of the night. You know, th- this is this is definitely going to be a good fight, and 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 I, I I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't a fan of Joey Hart and. I, I I can't say that I'm not rooting for him. I'd like to see what happens in all of the fights, but I do have favorites in certain fights, you know, but I wouldn't be watching if I didn't know, if I knew exactly what was going to happen. Joey's a kid that I don't know how you don't like him. Um, and that's to take nothing away from his opponent. Like you said, um, I, I expect this to be a tough fight. And that's why I think it's such a good fight for Joey at this point of his career. When we had a chance to speak to him, he mentioned he only wants to fight the best guys. Yeah. He's not looking for uh, he's not looking for wins. He's not trying to pad his amateur record. So I think this is a great fight for him, um, and a chance for both of these guys to show their skill on a high level. Um, a, and- a win a win here puts him and Josh Fleck in position to fight each other for the title. Definitely, and then that's a fight I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of talking about um, moving forward here if everything goes right for Joey. Yeah. Um, so- yeah. Let's never look past. Never, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, tomorrow night, it, it's going to be a really fun fight. Um, and the main event of the amateur card is a big fight, to say the least. Uh, Tommy Peterson, the number one ranked heavyweight in the trash talk rankings, is fighting Kiefer Bender, the number two ranked heavyweight in the trash talk rankings. So these yeah. are the two best guys in the state, according to you know the trash talk rankings here. And they're going to scrap it out tomorrow. We had a chance to speak with Kiefer, and I couldn't have liked that kid more. Um, his, his confidence and his understanding of the game and knowing what he's getting himself into. He knows he's fighting a national champion level wrestler. He knows he's fighting a guy that on paper is more athletic. But that's what he wants. That's what he's looking for. He wants those big fights because that's what's going to get him to the next level. And that's what's going to show him how good he really is. And I, I couldn't be more excited for that attitude and for this fight in general. Yeah, honestly, I was really impressed. Uh, this was another conversation that we had off camera, but it which really sucked. When he turned the camera and showed us his home gym, the fact that he's training at home, he's training at the gym, he's working with people, he's inviting people to his home. He's Dude, he's doing it all, all the time. He, there's nothing more serious uh, that he takes in life right now, or, I mean, besides his family and everything. But uh, but with when it comes to fighting, he takes this just as serious as the guys on the highest level does. And this is what he's doing as an amateur. I can't wait to see what he start the amount of effort that he starts putting into it when he becomes a pro and he's starting to get paid for this shit. Like yeah. the, the, this, this is good. And, and, and the, the, the fact that both these guys are ranked so highly in, it's just it's it's another it's another great trash talk fight just because of how the rankings are going to play out, how it's all going to shift. And, Hopefully, at the end of this, we it can set up another t- uh, title fight, you know, because I, I feel like a few of those are going to uh, play themselves out after this card. Oh, definitely. I feel like as of right now, um, this is the uncrowned title fight for Minnesota heavyweights. Uh, whoever wins this, obviously, is going to show that they are uh, number one at this point in time and, you know, put a bullseye on their back for the next group of guys to, to try to stake their claim. And 
that's what's great about this game is, you know, especially at the amateur level is no matter how good you get, no matter how tough it is, there's always that next guy coming up. And this, like I said, this is a big fight. All of the amateur fights we just mentioned um, are great fights. We, we did a lot of interviews with most of the people on the card. So please go back, learn about these guys, get a feel for them. Cause I mean, everybody on this card, we've been able to relate to them and it, it just makes, makes you a little bit more excited to see what happens. Yeah, exactly. Same here. And honestly, this just gave me a great idea. This is the uncrowned title. We need to make our own trash talk title, dude. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, this has been Trash Talk, breaking down the amateur part of the LFA card going down May 31st. Be sure to check it out on, well, I guess it won't be on TV. So you buy your fucking tickets and make sure you show up, you guys. All right. You're, you live in Minnesota. These are Minnesota fighters. Support them. All right. Yeah. And, and if you're there, like I said, support them. Scream as loud as you can because this is the next crop of talent. These are the guys that are going to be on the television portion of the card here in the next couple of years. So get to know them quick. Get to support them now so that way you're not jumping on the bandwagon later. You know what I'm saying? It's all good, baby, baby. Shake it, shake it. It was all a dream. I used to read.